Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120 month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence. So I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with prison talk. And you're getting down with another fresh out prison talk. Um, I had a comment from a viewer about commissary in prison. And um, in regards to, you know, people putting money on your books and um, how canteen and all that works. And I just want to say that commissary in prison, depressing, man. Depressing. You, you look at what is being sold in prison and your average wage is 17 cents an hour. You got a pack of top ramen is roughly 25 in some places 50 cent a pack. You got a beef sausage that's processed has been sitting on a shelf for how many years? That's, you know, a dollar something. You got cheese with you know, dollar something, processed cheese. You have, you know, chips, you know, two dollars, depending on case of so you know, case of sodas, um, I don't know, eight, nine bucks, um, probably old ass soda they got rid of. Um just everything <laughs> you talk about inflation on the street, you, you look at those prices and look at the wages. You know, uh <laughs> You're sitting there, you got a $300 a month limit you could spend. Um, you know, if you're trying to eat healthy, you may be trying to buy some canned chicken, canned tuna, you know, maybe sardines, um, you know, depending on what else, they, whatever else they have on there that's healthy. Um, you're, you're, you're trying to be efficient with what you're given and a lot of times, you know, a lot, you don't even want to eat in the chow hall because, you know, the food on certain days is just slop. You know, it's, it's, it's stuff they're getting from um, local contracts. A lot of times the people that work there have hookups with these farms or these dairies. So they're, they're making money. So these prisons are tied into the local economies of the cities they're in. That's why they're in their cities that are way out that wouldn't have anything outside the prison. The prison is the base for economics in that town. If there was no prison, there would be no Walmart, there would be no post office, there would be no Home Depot, there would be no um, apartments being rented, there'd be no housing development, there would be no, um, no Cisco, you know, that delivered the food. There would be uh, none of that. So everything evolves around the prison and it runs all full circle. Even, like I said, going back to the commissary, um, the toothpaste, you know, you, you if you got to, you know, hook up on toothpaste, you're like, oh, okay, they can get it from me. You know, you got to hook up on old um, generic ass Nikes or um, Adidas. You can slang them into prisons. You know, this is the commissary. This is the economics of the prison. 18 cents an hour, you know, some guys, oh man, I'm making overtime. You know, maybe if they're, depending on what kind of job, maybe they're getting in the, in the factories where they're considered um, the top jobs. Maybe they're making, I don't know, a buck. If they're lucky, a buck or something, you know. Um, so, you know, guys are working all month and some guys are bragging because they got a paycheck of maybe 400 something dollars in prison, bro, for a whole month. These were guys who were gangsters, drug dealers, but their money's gone. The money's gone. You know, you're calling home. People aren't picking up no more. You're there. Your, your mom, she's stressed out to the point where, you know, maybe she's 
she's passed away. The people that you love, that used to, you know, you go over their house, used to drop off money, used to take care of them, they done moved on. Out of sight, out of mind. You go to the phone room or the phone area to try to make a call. You know, you try to call two or three people, nobody picks up, and then you just kind of look around. Like, yeah, you're, you're in prison all alone. You have to figure out how you're going to survive. And if you're even going to go to commissary, there was months I didn't even go to commissary. I had a job, a pay you no mind job that paid maybe a couple bucks a month. It was like eight cents an hour you worked or maybe, you know, 10 cents. You only worked an hour a day because I spent all my time in a law library and on myself, like just working on my spirit. And um, I hustled inside prison. My, my hustle was typing, uh, helping people file briefs, showing people how to do certified mail, how to do certificate of service, how to um, draw up, write up petitions, how to get aff you know, affidavits notarized, how to respond to um, court actions, all this stuff, man, that's what I hustled. And these guys, you know, a lot of them worked in the factories or had a job and they would come and say, hey man, um, how much you charge for this? And I'll go to commissary for you. And that's how I got what I needed off of commissary. I only focused on mainly on hygiene stuff, um, like, you know, deodorant, shaving stuff, um, you know, facial soap, body soap, lotion, um, you know, when I could, a pair of shoes, but I live very minimalistic and um, that was my trade-off. So I wasn't living in there, you know, material or, you know, prison balling, you know, with cut off sweats and all the fancy stuff like that. I didn't have any of that stuff in there, you know, and there weren't a lot of people that I could call on the street to say, put money on my books. And I didn't want to burden anybody like that. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't get myself any type of debt. So I owed anybody. And when I did have anybody purchase anything for me, it was a book like only on the holidays. Can you send me this book? And I would send them the name of the book and they could order it and they would send it in for me. But I spent all my, whatever money I earned in prison, primarily on educational items and self-help items. And that's how I survived and was able to get what I needed off a of commissary. But I used to see guys, you know, who would get in a hole, gambling, buying drugs. They would go in there, call their family members. Hey, can you send me this? And it's like, man, I can, you know, I, how much you, oh, just send me, I told you to send me this. Mom, you didn't, didn't hit my books. And they're trying to get the stuff on their books before the commissary hits because they owe this guy. They've been borrowing stuff on the compound and, it, you know, they're in debt. And it's just like, they have, it's just a treacherous cycle. Even in prison, these people are playing a game of I owe. And it's just, it's toxic, man. And, you know, commissary, you know, I, 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 I look at that whole concept and how they reprogram you to buy shit food at inflated prices. And then I look at on a street and then you go in a grocery store and you look at majority of the grocery store is shit food. And then you know, on all the aisles and all the good stuff was way in the back, like the stuff that's not processed, the meats, uh, the cheeses or, you know, whatever other items that are nutritious all the way in the back of the grocery store, very back. It's not in the front. It's all the way in the back and all the processed stuff, all the, the, the you know, the high carb and, and sugar stuff is all in front of you when you first walk in and in prison, that's what, the same thing. You go in there, a case of soda, you know, the top ramen, the chips, the cup, you know, cup of noodles, all the bullshit, man, all the high sodium, you know, all the just stuff that has all the, 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 uh, the, the fake ingredients and, and stuff. And it's like, I did everything I could to try to be as healthy as possible and not starve. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a, 
it's a shitty, it's a shitty place. And you know, a lot of people don't talk about like just, you know, what it, the commissary and you know, carrying your bag and you know, people. Some people they get they have a big bag and you know they feel like they're balling in prison because you got a bunch of honey buns, soda, beef sausages, noodles, and dude, it's like you're eating. Sh this is this is what it is though. This is this stuff becomes valuable commodities having a full locker is like having uh, a bmw parked in front of your house or mercedes that's how crazy it is that's how reverse the psychology is in prison is having that bag carrying that bag is it creates importance in prison dude this shit man and, you know and a lot of you guys are just what just waiting to go in there you're anxious to catch a case to go in there and it's not that bad i mean dude if you are embracing shopping in a commissary in prison hanging out being able to have an hog and dogs maybe once a week walk around the yard everybody's wearing the same clothes you know um you're eating you know bullshit food you're hanging around a bunch of men something's really wrong with you man Something's really wrong, and you're cool with calling your kids on the phone, talking with them for 15 minutes, talking to your wife, and hoping you get a visit. Some of these places are so far out, you're not getting a visit. And the only, you know, when, and the people when they get visits, I used to, you know, hear the stories about, oh man, they had the vending machine. I got a, I got a sandwich. I got, you know, I got a, a little burger out of there, and you get to heat it up in the microwave. That shit is like having. Ruth Chris in prison, man. Going to a visiting and being able to get something out the vending machine, man. Ain't that shit crazy? A damn sandwich you wouldn't even look at on the street that's in a refrigerator that's been out there that they stocked who knows how long, but heating that up in a microwave, that's like Ruth Chris or Morton's. And I never got to go. I never had a visit in prison, man. Never had a visit, man. Never had a visit. I, I can't blame my family because, you know, they had to live their life. And I was way out in the middle of these nowhere places in the middle of deserts and shit, you know. And the thing about these prisons, they're probably from any airport on an average a couple hours. It's not just close. I'm talking about two or three hours from any local airport. That's how they're set up. So I didn't get any visits. Some people got visits, you know, all the time. They had a female running for them, you know, had a, had a family member that really just, oh, you know, and whatever they could do, you know. And I don't know, so many people, if they never had a visit, if they'd even make it, they probably would have committed suicide in there. Some of these guys, they're, they just, you know, they needed that to keep them going. For me, I just had to keep reflecting on why am I here and was I such a bad person that I can't get a visit? Was I just that disconnected from people with relationships that nobody would take the time out of their schedule to come visit me? But I would have to think like if somebody was way out there in the middle of nowhere, would I want to walk in and lock myself up for a couple hours and go sit with this person? You know, would I want to do it? So I couldn't knock them. I couldn't knock like my grandmother who's old or my mom who, you know, taking care of you know her family. I couldn't knock these people because would I want to drive, catch a flight, spend a thousand some dollars, a couple thousand dollars to come visit somebody to sit for a couple hours. And then sometime they get all the way to the prison and they can't get in there because they said they have the, the wrong outfit on. The pants are too tight, dress is too short, wrong color. You're showing your shoulders, all this bullshit, wrong shoes. But coming back to the commissary, and 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 you know, I, and I want to tie it into the visiting because you know, like I said, the visiting food is still shit food, but it's something that's not offered on a commissary, and that makes you feel special. Food is your only orgasm in prison that gives you any you know re, you know reflection to the street. Like, wow, you know, what I mean, this is like, you know, you try to imagine eating a spread and thinking you're, you know. Uh, somewhere else on the street eating, you know, maybe at some restaurant you used to go to, you know, on the Vegas Strip or, you know, off of PCH or, you know, wherever downtown Manhattan, wherever you're from, you know, you, used to, you try to imagine the food and then you realize it's not the same food. 
because an hour or two later, you got to take a mean shit. But it's, 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 um, it's, it's embarrassing and degrading, bro, calling around trying to find people to send you $20, send me $100. You know, $100, bro, $200. Hey, man, can you send me some money in my books, man? I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I hit up, you know, maybe my mom a couple of times when, um, you know, the holiday or something to send me a book, but I didn't really hit her up to put money on my books like that. I, I couldn't do it, man. It was, a, it was really a reality check of who you are as a person and to be some, you know, hard ass person on the street or you this and that. And now you're in here begging somebody to send you some money. And then, you know, some people were balling on the street, but after 10 years, some people don't ran off with the money, not even 10 years, two, three years, the money you had hidden over here. You can't even tell people where your real money's at because then they'll go, where's it at? I'll go get it for you. Oh man, you know that car, where's the title at? I'll, I'll, I'll flip it for you. Man, you ain't getting shit for none of that stuff. Your car, that, that, that sick ass ride you had, that's just going for peanuts. They're keeping most of the money. You're not gonna get shit on your books. Hopefully you got somebody that's really solid that when you sell whatever you're selling, they can put that money on your on your on your account so that you'll have it in the last a while, or hopefully you have some, I don't know, some type of stocks or something set up where you get dividends and and um somebody put the dividends on your books, you know what I mean? But you don't want to put too much money on your account because you know you got people looking at your account and they're hating guards in there. You know, you have fifty thousand, hundred thousand on your account, sixty man, them people are in their feelings, man. They mad at you, they're looking for something to do, they'll start harassing you. You got all this stuff in your in your in your little sale. It's a sale, man, and these people are still hating on you. You're in a sale with commissary, and these people are hating on you because they're looking at you have too much in jail, in prison. They look at your books, you got a hundred thousand on your books. Bro, they're looking like they got to work however many hours to get that hundred thousand, and here you are with it in your on your books, and you're you're sitting in jail. They don't have no account with no hundred thousand in it. Who sent you five thousand? Who sent you this? How you doing this? You know, and they want to just get mad and put maybe put you under investigation because they don't like the fact you're going to commissary all the time. How you getting all this extra commissary? You got X amount. How'd you get all this? You know, because some people have two or three other people who can't go, you know, they'll put money on their books and have them go for them. And then that way they have extra tuna fish or chicken so they can eat healthy, you know, and they don't like that either. Jail is just, it's a shit show. The commentary is a shit show. Chow hall is a shit show. Politics is a shit show. Racism is a shit show. The guards are, the, are a shit show. The war is a shit show. It's just a shit show all around, man. It's a it's a disgusting place, and you know you know going back to you asking about commissary, man, it's depressing, man. And to stand in line and you looking at them giving your food to you, this is shit you would never buy on the street. There's not one item in the damn commissary I would ever put in my shopping cart on the street at a grocery store. Not one item. Not one item, man. To hell with commissary, to hell with prison. The people who act like, oh man, I was in their prison balling. Bro, these people are idiots. <laughs> if you, if, even if you weren't balling on the street, but you had family that cared about you, you were, you're doing the right thing, you're working, you see your kids, you're able to you know, take them out maybe you know, once a week or every other week to go eat something and experience freedom sitting around, you know, outside trees, whatever. Um, regular people, you don't have to worry about, you know, sitting too close to a white guy because it's, you know, you get your throat slit or your face cut because you're at the wrong table, um, you know, and commissary coming out, somebody wants to press you for your bag. There are people who get pressed for their commissary leaving. If you're soft and they see a dude keep going, going, and he's not clicked up, you know, he, he's like, oh, maybe that dude's kind of soft or, you know, whatever. They'll try to press him for his commissary. They see you going all the time and they, didn't, they don't have nothing. They savages like that, man. Um, let me get that commissary up off you. you, you what are you going to do? Give it up? Or are you going to stick this dude? You're going to have to stick him because these guys don't understand nothing but violence. Going to get some shit commissary 
you might have to stick a dude because he wants to take your bag of food. Oh, let me get that up off you. Oh, you got the shoes, man? Let me, let me get, I need some shoes. Some dudes don't even have commissary. They just hang out in there to watch who's buying what. Imagine going to the grocery store. You come out with your car, your basket of food and people are like, hey, man, let me get that basket up off you. What are you talking about? Hey, man, I need that. Go buy your own. No, I'm going to take yours. Imagine a guy waiting for you outside the grocery store to take your groceries that you just paid, that you worked for, and now you're trying to feed your family and they want to take it from you. That's the type of ignorant ass, dumb asses, barbaric individuals you have in prison when you're dealing with the commissary. You literally got to stick a dude to get your commissary bag or let him take it. And once he takes it once, it's a wrap. They don't talk about this. Oh, man, they just talk about, yeah, I was up in there, this and that, and knocking the guards and stuff. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Knocking the guard. You're knocking some you know, prison attractive, which on the street, she has nobody looking at her. Now she's in there. She's she's walking around like she's a goddess and, you know, shaking ass and flirting and doing all this shit. And you're in there desperate because... You're around all these dudes and you want to feel like a man. And going to the commissary, buying a big bag of food, somewhat feeling like you're balling, you feel like you're the man. A big bag of commissary, you're balling. Oh, man. Prison, bro. It ain't the place to be. And um, I don't advocate anybody entertaining it. I know a lot of people think, oh, man, you know, you know, we, we need to stop going to prison. Yeah, you just get, you, you, sometimes you got to just break down and work, man, on the street, man. It's not, you know, it's not that bad. It's because when you get to prison um, for what you're working for in prison, 18 cents, 17 cents a dollar, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, 20, 30 years, you know, yeah, that's that's uh, what you're working for. And that's what it is. You're, you're, you're prison labor, bro. And you're going to spend your money right back in the prison. So the money never leaves. You make money in the prison, you spend money in the prison. Money never leaves. It's just a cycle. They're getting all your money, all your resource, all your time, everything. And if they see you living too well, they'll put you in the hole for investigation because they say you're up to something because you're prison balling, you got too much commissary, and maybe you got too much money on your books. It's disgusting, bro. Big Kirk 916, Prison Talk. Go to FreshLifeSeries.com, pick up some merch, subscribe, share the channel. And, uh, man, stay the hell out. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. With Fresh Out Ministries, we're doing a new program where we're doing a takeover of a mom pop cafe or restaurant and we're doing a pay it forward. So we're going to offer free meals at this particular restaurant or cafe, mom pop, for a certain amount of time. And we are asking that you make a donation to pay it forward so that we can continue doing this program for other mom pop restaurants and cafes because we know that it's hard times out here. You have a lot of people that talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And so we're actually walking the walk. We've been doing it for over 11 years on social media. We've been getting shadow banned. We've been getting uh, demonetized. So we want to give back. And this is our way of giving back to helping everybody through these trying times with this economy. You know, a lot of churches, they got hundred billions of dollars and you don't see them out here helping the people who are in times of need, but they're still taking in the form of donations. But how is it helping the community? We want to build a community sense where we help each other. We can all overcome. You can't sit around, wait for somebody to save you. You got to save yourself. And this is the way you do it. So by us being able to do these takeovers with Fresh Shop Ministries, with the mom pop restaurants and cafes, we want to build a film, talk to you guys, get your feedback on what's going on right now in society. Hopefully you guys find it in your heart to donate. This donation, which is a pay it forward, will allow us to do other mom pops 
around the country eventually, but right now we're gonna be in uh, Southern uh, California and Los Angeles, Orange County. So hey, reach out to your local businesses there. And if you are out of town in another area and you would like us to come there, if you provide the necessary means, we will come there also and do the same pay it forward. But right now, hey, if you're in lo locally in Los Angeles, Orange County, hit us up, freshoutseries at gmail.com. You can also make a donation on our link tree on our Instagram at freshoutseries. But smelly ball sack and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at freshhouseseries.com.